Hey, you. Yeah, you. Spoiler warning. So don't whine when I spoil the ending of the show by telling you Rhaenyra is... A <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'd never do that to you, my sweet summer child. Welcome back to another House of the Dragon, or I like to call it Hot D episode review. We're now on episode three of the season, and it's the weakest one so far. That's not saying it's worse than season eight of Game of Thrones, but this one was one of those episodes where I just took my phone out and waited for some scenes to end. Even my brother, who I watch every episode with, ended up falling asleep and I had to shake him awake. Anyways, let's get into it. The episode starts off with the war already starting within the realms. You see houses such as House Bracken and House Blackwood, vassals of that house you've heard of, House Holy, you know, the same house that Catelyn Stark from Game of Thrones is from. And their conflict is a bit of a foreshadowing for what's going on with the Targaryens and just the war in general. I'll talk about this later in the review, but you could see that there's deep-rooted conflict other than the war between crowns. This has been a war for generations and they too don't know why. Princess Rhaenys stretches it further by questioning whether they remember what they're fighting for in the first place. Is it because of the claim of throne or when Prince Jaehaerys was assassinated or when Luke took Aemon's eye? She states that, and the desire to kill and burn takes hold and the reason is forgotten, which quite honestly is a very strong quote. Then she mentions Alison Hightower, the last person that could be reasoned with in Team Green, and a chance to end this war without bloodshed. Then we meet up with Damon, who reaches Heron Hall and is skulking about in the castle. And quite honestly, I love this scene because we finally get a sense of how broken Heron Hall is. We get a little glimpse of it here and there, but it's mainly like on the barely outside of Heron Hall. But this is a foreshadowing of how much damage dragons can do. The castle is dark abandoned roof collapse and rain just pouring into every single crack and opening and that once the dragons come into play that's when the true damage comes in sir christian cole uh, uh, is bringing a host to subdue riverlands and take care hall and he's accompanied by allison's brother sir gawain hightower and already comments on the lucky rise of sir christian cole and already i'm starting to like this dude he's one of the cool ones but anyways but they march in the haste to challenge the claim of the riverlands they ought to be careful because there's a lot of open land there and a person who can see with almost superhuman vision can spot them if they were on a dragon anyways this is where the episode gets a little wacky for me so now we're at the i guess we're like in the riverlands and sir Kristen cole and sir gawain are out in the open and they're spotted by lady bela targaryen on her dragon moon dancer and she spots the knights uh from the glint of their armor from that far okay sure sure then she proceeds to swoop down to intercept the sirs the sirs make for the trees and just as bela catches up to them she just misses even though she's on a dragon that can breathe fire but whatever i'll just consider this inexperience and you can't argue that she wasn't supposed to attack because of the mention of it later but for one she kind of mentions it like i wasn't going to attack them but you can clearly tell in her voice that she was going to attack them and also she was going at freaking mock speed and her dragons are going to try and grab them then the series hide in the trees and she gives up and like wow flawed armor it's holding up pretty well in this episode i wonder how strong it'll get hopefully it doesn't get stronger because it's getting ridiculous then Miseria has the smartest idea i've ever heard in the show like probably rivaling with season eight of game of thrones or season seven of game of thrones where they kidnapped the white she gets rhaenyra to sneak into king's landing to consult with allison hightower that's right the queen of the seven kingdoms who's currently at war with the people who are at king's landing is going to sneak into king's landing yeah okay and you think wow she probably would get in there with trouble nope you know why? Because her plot armor is made of Valyrian steel, my friends. They really doubled layered the plot armor in this episode. Anyways, they speak at the Sept and discuss. Also, if I were Allison in this situation, I I would have screamed, regardless if I was getting stabbed. Because look, if I scream, the war ends, okay? That's it. And the worst comes to worst, I'm dead. But 
at least my son and everyone lives. So I would have screamed. So yeah, anyways, they reminisce and try to come to terms. Then they find out that King Viserys never meant for King Aegon to be on the throne. And that he was talking about the story of the prince that was promised and the Song of Ice and Fire. And despite learning this, Allison doesn't change her mind and the war continues. And that whole plot of getting Rhaenyra into the castle really doesn't matter. Look, listen, um, <laughs> this is by far the most weakest episode I've seen in a while. Um, and the whole episode was to reiterate the meaning of this war and that men seek it. And you see the men in conflict and hasting towards war. And you see it in both of the small council meetings. Allison questions the boldness of whether we should be marching to Riverlands without a bigger host and tries to stop Aegon and Aemon from going to the Riverlands. And while Rhaenyra is refusing to start the bloodshed and her lords are just constantly telling her, do it, you have to do it. This is this is it now or never. And honestly, I respect this because like it's a lesson that we learn in today's society uh, where, you know, we shouldn't be focusing on war. We should be focusing on trying to make peace. And this would work, but you can't have this message when, for one, the only act of fighting was from Bela and she had strict orders not to engage. And yet she tried to engage. And then two, you can't argue to prevent war when you do something stupid, like bring yourself to King's Landing, where if somebody were to spot you, you would be taken and the war would end there. Yeah. Anyways, there's also another message to this episode where wars are so deep rooted that the people fighting the war have forgotten why they're fighting. And in most cases, it's conflict passed down generations without explanation or the bloodshed just blinding people and eventually they're just fighting for no reason other than to fight. And you could say that this moral of the story worked in this episode, but for me, it kind of missed because of the ridiculousness of the plot armor that was going on in the last part of the episode. And I'm not saying start the war. I'm simply saying the war has already begun. Like when Rhaenyra's child was killed in last season, that was when the war started. At this point, we're already dragging along the idea of, oh, war is bad. We can't stop war. But I'm sorry, you can't address that when the war has already begun. Like, it's time now. It's time. Stop cradling it. It's already happened. That's why this episode was kind of meh. For Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do a review every single week for every single episode until the season ends. And we also do um, video game uh, video game essays uh, regarding like the latest trends and news from there. And um, yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a like. And also comment down below. Feel, feel free to let me know. Like, do you think this episode was a bit wacky? Do you think that uh, this episode was kind of what the heck? Or do you feel like this episode was fine? Just let me know down below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay beautiful. Love y'all.